I've seen you. What have you been up to? I built this car in the late 60s, worked on it pretty hard, 67, 68. Started out with just a shell with individual front end parts, glassed them all together into one tilt nose. Built big block 454 Chevy, bored in 30 thousandths, turbo 400 in it, Chrysler 60 Dana rear end, 389 gears, it's got car injection. And <laughs> what year was that? About 68, raced it, Thompson, Quaker City, 42. Got away from racing for a long time, and this thing just sat in my shop. Always thinking that someday I'd get out and start racing again. I got it out, took it up to Thompson for the Nostalgia Drag Meet, and I met Ron there. He fell in love with the car, and I just decided that it would be a good home for it, because I wouldn't be able to take it out show it like he does. I felt that it was too powerful a car to leave to my grandson. Yeah. <laughs> so I sold it to Ron, untouched from the last time I raced it. There's not a thing been changed. And uh, he's, he's really took good care of it. It looked exactly like it. I sold it. And I'm just awful happy that he can take it out where people can see it and yeah. enjoy it. The last time was my best time, down a strip. 10, 23, 146. That was my best run. I, it had all kinds of power, but it was, it was kind of hard to handle, hard to go straight. It's a hydraulic uh, throttle linkage. This uh, master solar is off of a foreign car, car Anglia or something, oh, yeah. and uh, it's set up so I can hold a handbrake, work the clutch, keep the injection cleared up and uh, then once to lead the line then you know down to the end I'd flip my foot off over onto the foot brake and throw it in neutral at the same time and kill the magneto. Do you miss it? Well sure, sure I do. Uh, but it just it's a relief of my mind to know it's in a home where it'll be taken care of. Well, uh, I made Charlie a promise when I bought this car. I'd get this car out and show it and uh, make sure I let him know so that uh, he could be back and he could share in it. And uh, that's what we're doing here today. It's been pretty special to be here with Charlie uh, here in Cleveland in his hometown. Awesome.
catch up. <laughs> Welcome to Cleveland. <laughs> that was awesome. It's not that I didn't like the you know, California style car, it's just that I was way more attracted to that goofy East Coast kind of style, you know, like no bigs and littles, no heavy chop, all that sort of stuff. I, I don't know what it is, it's just, I don't know, I can't explain why I like channeled cars. I would have loved to have chopped it. There's a, there's a white uh, five window that's channeled and chopped in, in the little pages with a like a little rifle hanging off the door in the show pictures of it. And I love the stance, I love everything about that car, even the chops, like spot on. But there's no fucking way in the world I would fit in the car. Like my head already pokes out the top of the insert now. And I don't know what I'm gonna what's gonna happen when I fill that in, or be my head a lot. But uh, as soon as I saw the, saw the Casa car, I knew I had to have a channeled car. And I really wanted a three window. So I bought a glass body, and a flathead and stuff like that. Five years after that, I acquired a friendship with a bloke and he asked me for some advice on building a car. And, uh, and I said, whatever you do, don't build a car that you can afford, build a car that you want, so you'll never lose interest in it. And he asked me why my car wasn't, what well, nothing was happening to my car, and I said, I couldn't give him an answer. So then I thought about it for a while and uh, thought, fuck, I always wanted a five window, but heavily channeled, you know? So I sold the three window body off sold the APA that I had with the five speed because I thought that was the shit to have and then just built the car that I really wanted to have and uh, started acquiring this stuff. I got the flathead from an emergency generator that he had in his um, engine reconditioning shop and uh, that was closing down so I went and pulled it out with the gas axe and fired it up a little while later at home and it ran beautifully so chucked that in the car and had to have the three speed because it's just agricultural and cool. Found the five window, an ad for a five window body in uh, the Pacific Northwest from this dude and uh, started hassling him about it and he sent me some photos and it was cut up into, God, maybe 10 pieces. So stupid me, had the money, so I just bought it and then it got shipped to a friend of mine in Seattle. Sort of bought parts that, that no one else wanted, like the firewalls from an old hot rod that was heavily channeled, so the bottom part was gone. Um, the boot lid has got a, an inner skin of a some sort of American car support structure holding that together and I got it home and mate helped me pull it off the back of my ute and we pulled it all out of the crates and he just looked at me with this blank stare and said, are you really gonna build this fucking thing? <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, I'll give it a go. Yeah, got it to this state now, which is not finished. It's just sort of pieced together um, and just wanted to drive it before I worry about scratching it and shit like that. It's got a New Zealand quick change in it, uh, 48 rear with reverse 16s and just lots of old shit on it, lots of old chrome. The manifold's just the aftermarket or reproduction of a Navarro, fixed in uh, head covers on it, just over stock cast iron heads. I think they were off a, off a blown car because they've got like a lower belt strap cutouts in them. The, the front end is just the, your basic dropped axle with chrome backing plates, which I got from a, from a swap meet locally and it came off a, an old hot rod of 34. Uh, the chassis I got from a dude in Port Ferry called Tony Casser. It was about year 2000 and that was before internet and 
eBay and all that sort of shit. My girlfriend uh, said she wanted to do for me, which is just a seat at the moment. So I said I wanted hand stuff, tuck and roll, not just the foamed and folded stuff. So she learned how to do that and did the seat for me, which was, turned out fucking awesome. The dash is from an early 50s Chevy, which I sectioned and filled and yeah. So I filled it with Stuart Warner gauges and the steering wheel is a Plymouth, early Plymouth, like 50s Plymouth. It's channeled about eight inches at the back and the depth of the frame plus half an inch at the front. The hubcaps are a 50s accessory cap made by Lions. Um, it was really, really hard to get a full size cap to go over early 40 running gear. As soon as I found out that they existed, I had to have a set of those. Hoping to spray it in a nitro, like a sandy, goldy, bronze sort of color. And because my girlfriend can stitch up uh, and stuff, tuck and roll, I'll be doing the wheel wells above the radiator, um, the whole interior, all in white. Yes, I'd like to crown all the front end. Grilling said I have one that's sectioned to fit that grill shell but I want to change the grill shell that's on it because I think it's a little short in the chin. So, but I have another inserts going to it and I'm probably going to do it that dark grey colour with the gold look nice. Why do they call you Tommy Taco? Uh, it's a kind of a euphemism for a uh, lady's vagina. <laughs> <laughs>